Today I'm going to show you how to do character movement when it comes to Unity and 2D. I do want to mention that I do have timestamps down below. So if there's something you don't need to know here at the beginning, you can go down to the timestamps and just skip ahead. We're going to be covering quite a few things that might seem new to people. As you can see, I have a completely new, fresh project in front of me here. And the first thing we're going to be doing before we do anything else is I want to make sure I update Unity so we have all of the different packages that we need to have. So I want to make sure that I go up to Window, go down to Package Manager. I'm just sort of gonna drag it down at the bottom here. And then I want to make sure that we don't get any error messages at the bottom here and we have everything updated. So now we can actually get started on creating some character 2D movement. So what I'll do here to begin with is I'll create two things inside the hierarchy. First of all, I'll go ahead and create our player character. So I'm gonna right click, go down to 2D object, sprites, and then I'll just create a square just so we have something for now. I'm gonna rename this one as player. Then I'll create another object, 2D object, sprites, square. And I'll call this one something like ground. Now, if these objects are not centered and you can actually check that inside the inspector window, if it doesn't say 0, 0, 0, right clicking on the transform and then clicking reset, just so everything is completely zeroed out. Now, what I'll do here is I want to be able to tell the difference between the player and the ground. So I'll actually click the player. I'll go into the inspector, make sure that the color is set to something else than white. So I'll just put a bright red. Then I'll go into the ground and I'll just move it down a little bit. So maybe something like minus three. And then I'll just scale up the width of it. So we actually do have something that looks like a ground. So I think about 20 should be enough. I will do one more thing just because it kind of bothers me. So I'll go into the camera. I'll go over to the background and I'll change the background to something that is, you know, slightly uh, lightest gray. So, so we don't have a blue background behind all of this. So now you can actually see that we have something that looks somewhat decent. And now the win here, something that I recommend that you just kind of get in the habit of doing inside the game view, you can go up to the aspect ratio and just go ahead and choose the one that you will be, you know, playing the game on. So in my case here, it's going to be 1920 by 1080. So I'm just going to change the view so it matches the exact window that it should be viewed on. Now, the first thing we're going to be doing is something that's related to the previous video, which is we're going to be adding some rigid body components or at least one and a couple of colliders to these different objects here. So we do actually have some physics going on. So what I'll do is I'll go to the ground and I'll go ahead and add a square collider. In this case here, the box collider matches up with the, the shape of the object. So I'm gonna choose that one. I'm also gonna go into the player and a couple of things we're gonna to do to the player here is I will actually be adjusting the height of the player because right now it's an even square, but I'm gonna go ahead and change the Y axis to one 0.5, just so we have a little bit of height. And what I'll do here is I'll go ahead and add, first of all, a rigid body 2D. We're not gonna touch anything inside the rigid body just yet. This is something I'm gonna wait until later just to show the full effect. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add a collider. And I'm gonna go into my 2D physics. And you might be thinking, well, this is a box. So it makes sense that we'll be choosing a box collider, right? Now, when it comes to a player, inside your game. If I were to pick a box collider, we would get a box that goes around the box, which makes sense. But the problem here is that because we have this sharp corner down here in the corner of the player, uh, we can actually get stuck on things. So what I want to do to avoid this is I want to round the corners down at the bottom. I'm going to be adding something called a capsule Collider 2D. So with the Capsule Collider, we won't get stuck in corners since all the corners have been rounded off, which is much better. The reason we have to scale up our player is because if this were to be, you know, something like this, we would actually get a circle instead. So just for it to look somewhat like a player, because usually when we have a player, it has a little bit more height than a width. We're going to be using a rectangle rather than just a square. Now, if you do have an actual player sprite that you want to insert, cause I do have a player sprite on my computer, I could insert and use that instead. Uh, but just because I know not everyone is sitting here with all the you know, sprites ready and stuff to test these things out, we're just gonna be using a square for now. It's gonna do the same thing as if you were just using a sprite. So don't worry about it. The next thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and go down to my project window and I'm actually going to drag this one out a little bit. So I'll take it and drag it out to the side. So we have the console and the package manager over here and we have the projects window over here in the left. Then inside the project window, I'm going to right click and I'm going to be creating a folder which is going to be containing all the different scripts that we're going to be making for our game. Scripts. And there we go. 
Inside the scripts folder, we're going to be creating our very first script that we're going to be using in our game, which means that we actually need to start coding. So I'll right click inside the folder, create C sharp scripts. And the name that we're going to be giving our script here is something that needs to make sense to what the code inside the script is going to be doing. Now I have a player inside my game and I want this player to be able to move around and jump and just sort of like get around in the screen. So I'm going to be calling this one player controller with a capital P and a capital C. Now that we have a script for the player controller, I'm going to drag it up and add it to my player. And then if we were to click the player, you can actually see that we have it inside here as a component at the very bottom. I should mention that if you are sitting here thinking, oh, C sharp, I know nothing about C sharp. You know, is this going to be complicated? Then I do actually have a very short course on my channel that I made some time ago on C sharp. So if you feel like you want to get a head start, you can go watch my C sharp course and then return back here. But I should mention that I'm not expecting any of you to know any C sharp in this video here. And just know that it's okay if you don't understand any C sharp yet. I will be taking this slow and explain everything. Now let's go ahead and open up our script and there's actually a couple of ways we can do it. Either we can right click on the script down here inside the inspector or we can go to our scripts over here and just double click it. It should open inside Visual Studio as a default if you did do everything that I did when we installed Unity in the first video. And again, if you don't get any helpful pop-ups that I do also get at some point as I'm coding this, make sure you go up and attach it to Unity because believe me, I don't remember everything about you know the coding for Unity. So I do look up things constantly. So having a helpful little guide that sort of pops up with suggestions is just kind of like a neat thing to have. Now just go ahead and ignore everything you see inside our Visual Studio for now. All you need to know to begin with in this video here is that we have something called fields, properties and methods when it comes to c -sharp programming. Fields are basically containers that we use to store data about our game objects. So for example, if we have a player, then we might need to know what his health is at the moment. We might need to know how fast he should be running or how high he should jump. That kind of information is something we store inside these fields. And then we also have something called properties, which is what we used in order to actually get the data inside these fields or change the data inside the field. It's become a bad habit for people who don't make big video games to just change the fields directly. And this is something you'll notice that a lot of people teaching on YouTube is doing. And there's nothing wrong with it technically, but it is best practice to use properties in order to change or get the data that we have inside the fields. The reason I'm mentioning this is because we might here at the beginning just be changing the data inside the fields directly like everyone else is doing. Um, but once we get a little bit later into the course, I'm going to start using properties instead. And I think it's just kind of easier to just worry about fields and methods for now, just like the properties, just, you know, push them back a little bit and just ignore them for now. Once I feel like you're not gonna get overwhelmed, like you probably already are with this video here, then we will start using properties. So ignore properties for now and just focus on that we have fields and we have methods. Now methods are used for doing specific functions inside our game. So if for example, we have a player, then we can use a method and actually make the player run or make him jump. So kind of look at fields as just being like information that we keep about the player and then the methods are stuff that actually does something to our player. I don't expect you to have a photographic memory and remember everything that I just said. Um, this is something that will need repetition before you start remembering these things. So just hang in there and you will be fine, I promise. Um, let's actually go ahead and talk about what you're seeing on screen right now. Because you might have noticed something peculiar, which is that as a default, when we create a new c -sharp script inside Unity, we do already have some code going on inside our c -sharp script. Ha! Huh. At the very top, we have a couple of keywords called using and then followed by the name of something. Now, these are actually references to namespaces somewhere inside our Unity. Uh, project and we need these namespaces in order to be using the classes that Unity is providing us so we can do Unity specific functions and methods inside our code. On the next line you can see we have something called a public class player controller and you might go huh I've heard that name before that seems familiar and that's because whenever we create a C-sharp script the name of the file that we create is going to be the same name that the class is given inside the file. You can kind of see a class as being a blueprint that we can use in order to create objects from but for now just kind of look at it as a container that contains all the different fields properties and methods that are related 
to the player controller. We do also have something over here called mono behavior. And this is actually something we add onto this particular class here. What it does is that it says the player controller is going to derive from another class called mono behavior. And what that basically just means is that we are allowed access to specific methods that we use together with Unity. So as you can see down here, we do actually have two methods. We have one called start and we have one called update. And that is actually something we got from inside mono behavior. There are of course many other methods that are inside mono behavior that we can use. There's for example, one called fixed update, which is also one we're going to be using. So let's just go ahead and go down below update and write void space fixed with a capital F update with a capital U uh, parentheses. Oh, oh, it actually auto completed for me. Parentheses and then curly brackets. Don't worry too much about the private in front of void. Uh, private is something that by default, if you write nothing in front of, it's just going to be private anyways. It's just a way for us to visualize. Oh, wait, okay, so that is private even though, you know, this is also private. I'm not going to go too deep into the protection level, which is what we call it when we have the private and the public. Um, but for now, just go ahead and, and stick with the void. By the way, void basically just means that we don't plan to return any sort of data from this particular method. For example, if I were to do a calculation inside the method and I want to return, for example, the end result as a number, then we would actually not call this one void. We would actually call this one um, int fixed update because we plan to return something. Right now we are not actually returning something. So if we were to say return uh, 12, then it would actually go ahead and delete that error message because now I'm returning something. But like I said, we don't plan to return anything. So just a short explanation that probably just confused you even more. I can't tell why it's yellow, <laughs> to be honest. It's, it turned yellow for some reason. Let's go ahead and say fixed update. Oh, okay, it's still, oh, there. There we go, it's blue. So now let's go ahead and talk a bit about these three different methods here. And what these do is start is going to be running all the code inside the curly brackets. And this is only going to run once, right before we start calling on update and fixed update. Update is something that gets called on once per frame. So whenever we press play inside the game and the game starts running, we sometimes have code that needs to run constantly in the background and check for things. For example, if our player presses left on the arrow keys to make the player run left, then we need to be able to have something that checks for this input and that would, for example, go inside update. Fixed update, however, is going to be kind of the same as update, but the difference is, is that fixed update is actually updating together with the physics engine inside Unity. Whenever we do any sort of code that needs to run constantly, just like with update, but actually has something to do with the physics engine inside Unity, then we want to make sure that we do it inside fixed update. So we don't get any sort of, you know, messy things depending on the frame rate. So you're still with me or you're just completely confused. This is a lot of new information for people who might open up, you know, Visual Studio and Unity for the first time. So don't get frustrated or overwhelmed if you don't remember everything I'm talking about, or if you feel like I'm using a bunch of fancy words and you can't follow. It really sounds more complicated than it really is. So now let's actually go ahead and start making our player do stuff because that's what we came here for. What I'll do is I'll first of all, whenever I create a new script for any sort of game object like we just did for the player, is I need to think what exactly do I need when it comes to information about the player. It could be something like the player's health. It could be something about his run speed, his jump height. There's a couple of things here that we logically kind of needs to think about. Okay, what do we need to check for? And this is something that you with experience as you start programming more and more games is automatically just going to think, oh, of course we need to check for the player speed and then you'll just do it. Whereas right now I could imagine some people sitting here thinking, oh, I don't know anything about what we're supposed to be checking for. So don't worry about it. It is going to stick to you over time. So the way I like to do it is I like to think, okay, is there any components on the game object that we need to grab first? And right now, if I were to go back into Unity, if I were to click my player, you can see that we have rigid body, which is the one that handles physics. And since we're trying to get our player to move, then it means that we want to have physics applied to it. We want to push the player using physics. So we will need to grab the rigid body 2D components. Again, remember all of these are components. We can actually go ahead and say we want to create a private field and it's going to be a rigid body 2D 
type of data. And we want to name this one RB to D with a capitalized D. Essentially, when we create a field, we want to first of all tell it what kind of protection mode should it be. In this case here, I want to make it private. Then I want to tell it what kind of data. Is this a number? Is it a component inside Unity? Or is it a, a string, which is just characters? Or, you know, what exactly is this? And in this case here, we're just grabbing a component called a rigid body 2D component. And this is the name we're going to be referencing to in the future, whenever we need to use this rigid body 2D component. So the next thing I want to do is I want to actually get some data on this player here. So we have grabbed all the components we need to grab for now. Uh, so I'm just gonna go two lines down just to sort of systematically, you know, have some system inside my code. And I'll go ahead and create another private field. And I'm going to call this one a float. And I'm gonna name this one uh, move speed. Then I'll go down to next line. I'll also go ahead and just copy paste it and create another piece of data. This one is going to be jump force. So how high should our player jump? I also want to check if the player is actually jumping. So is he actually on the ground and can we jump? Or is he in the air, which means that we shouldn't be able to jump. And this is not going to be a float data type. Float, by the way, is a decimal point number. So like 10 point something, something, something. If you were to write int, which is another data type for number, then you can't have any decimal points. Now, the ground check is going to be what is called a Boolean, which is a true or false statement. That's the only thing we can assign to it. Is it true or is it false? So we're going to create a bool called is jumping. So is our character jumping is basically what I'm, I'm writing here. I'll also go ahead and create a float called move horizontal and this is going to be the one that we use to get the player input so when the player clicks a button on the keyboard we want that button to be stored inside one of these containers here now i'm going to be copying my private float move horizontal and i'm going to call this one move vertical and with these fields we have all the data we need to have in order to make our player run around and jump so what we need to do now is we have instantiated these fields like we created them but we haven't assigned a value to them. Like we haven't said that the move speed should be equal to 10 uh, and he needs to put F behind it if it's a float, by the way. Uh, we haven't done anything like this and we could do it inside our field here directly. But what I like to do is I like to go inside my start and I just like to take my move speed and say, you know what, move speed should be equal to, uh, let's set it equal to three because that's what I wrote in my notes. So I trust my notes. Then I'm going to copy it, paste it down a couple of times. So we want one for the move speed, the jump force, and our is jumping uh, field that we have up here. So I'll say jump force should be equal to 60. I'll say that my is jumping is going to be equal to false. And there's one more thing we need to do because as you can tell, we did already create a rigid body field, but this field right now is also empty. Just like all of these down here, they're all empty until we actually assign something to them. So we do need to tell it that, okay, so we have a container that needs to contain a rigid body 2D component. So we go down inside the start and say rigid body 2D or RB, 2D set it equal to game objects. And when we write game object, we're referencing to some kind of game object inside Unity. When we write it with a non capitalized G, we actually reference to the game object that our current script here is attached to. So right now, because my script is attached to my player inside my game here, then the game object keyword here with the non capitalized G is going to reference to the game object it's attached to, so the player. So we have the game object and then we say dot to tell it, okay, so what's next to grab? So we grab the game object, then we want to grab the component. So we say get components, the little arrow keys, parentheses, semicolon, because we want to end off all our code with a semicolon. I didn't mention that in the beginning, but you should. And inside the little arrows, I want to tell it what kind of component on this game object are we trying to grab. And I'm trying to get the rigid body 2D. So now we told it that this empty container up here that is a rigid body container type should be referencing to our game objects rigid body 2D component. By the way, this particular line of code here, you need to memorize. Anytime you need to grab a component from your game object, you will be using this line of code. So inside our update, because now we're done with the start, we want to go ahead and say that, okay, if the player is typing on a key on their keyboard 
for example, run left or run right, then we want to grab that information. So what I'll do is I'll say that we have our uh, move horizontal, which is a float data type. I'll put it inside update. I'll set it equal to input, which is a built in property dot get access raw, which is going to grab uh, the type of input that we're writing inside the, the parentheses here. So I say I want to grab a horizontal input and a horizontal input is basically just are they clicking on A and D or on the arrow keys left or right. You can change whatever horizontal should mean inside your Unity settings if you were to go inside your project settings. Uh, for now, just know that it's A and D left or right as a default in Unity when you haven't changed anything. I also want to do this for my vertical axis to check for jumping. So that will be W, S and up and down on the arrow keys. So I want to copy in my move vertical instead and instead of horizontal here, I want to say vertical. So we now have these two different button inputs that we're checking for. And now just to mention it, this is not actually doing anything inside our code yet. We're not moving the player or anything like that. This is basically just going to give us a number, which is going to be between minus one and one, minus one being left and one being right and zero being we're standing still. And it's going to assign that number inside move horizontal, which we then need to use in order to make our player move. So here's the question. If we want to move our player, should it be inside update or should it be inside fixed update? If you guessed update, you would be wrong because when we want to move our player, we're going to be using physics to do so. At least in this video here, we're going to be using physics because it's physics that we're messing with. It needs to go inside fixed update. So inside fixed update, I want to run an if statement, which is basically just checking if something is true then run the code inside the curly brackets. So what I want to do here is I want to say, okay, if move horizontal is greater than 0.1, then run the code. Now, the reason I'm writing 0.1 and not zero, because like I said, minus one is running to the left, one is running, running to the right, and zero is standing still. So why am I writing 0.1? It's basically a margin of error, which you know, could be argued that when we're checking for, you know, the get access raw player input, it is never going to be anything but minus one, zero or one. Um, but it's just something I like to do, you know, because it makes me comfortable. You could write zero if you want to do that. And it's probably going to give you the exact same result. But I feel comfortable with 0.1. Now, this is for checking if we're going right. We also need to check if the player is going left. So what I'll do is I'll write these pipe symbols, which means or. So if move horizontal is greater than 0.1 or move horizontal is lesser than minus 0.1 F then go ahead and move our player. So we're checking if we're running left or if we're running right. And now all we basically need to do is actually add a force to our player to make him move. So inside the curly brackets, I'll say we want to grab the rigid body 2D because that is the physics component on our player. And I want to add a force to him. So add force with a big A and a big F. And then I want to say parentheses curly brackets and inside add force, we need to be adding what kind of force we want to apply to the player. So in this case here, we want to add a new vector two parentheses and a vector two is basically a X and Y axis. So essentially, how far do you want him to go sideways and how far do you want him to go up and down? So now the first one is going to be the X axis and we do actually get that inside our move horizontal. So if this one is one, it means that we're going right. And if it's minus one, we're going left. So by putting that in here, we also want to create a Y axis. That should just be zero because we don't want to jump when we're pressing sideways. So right now, one or minus one is not really gonna be enough to make our player move that fast. So what we do is we take our moves speed up here and we actually multiply that with our move horizontal. So if we get one, then it will be one times three in this case here. And the same thing goes for the left, it will be minus three. So we're adding a little bit more speed to the left and right directions. There is also something called a force mode and do keep in mind that I'm putting it in between the ending parentheses here at the end. So I'll say comma, and then we'll say force mode. 
2D because we're working with a 2D object, dot, and then we can choose force or impulse. And you can actually tell it's giving us a small description of what each does. Um, as a default, because I want an instantaneous force applied to this object here, I'm gonna put it to impulse. And now we could actually go in and test it out. So if I were to go inside my Unity editor, just go ahead and clear the console here, press play. You can see that we are actually moving left and right using either A and D or the arrow keys. Of course, we just fell over. We'll fix that later. For now, just go ahead and stop playing the game, go back inside the code, and let's go ahead and add a jump as well. So inside fixed update, I'll go down a couple of lines and I'll just go ahead and copy what we have here inside the if statement because it's, it's a little bit the same that we're going to be doing here. Inside the if statement, I'm going to be deleting uh, the second half where we're taking for two different things. Instead of move horizontal, move vertical and take if it's higher than 0 0.1. Then instead of adding a force to the X axis, we want to add it to the Y axis. So I'm just going to copy what we have here and instead write 0 F. And instead of the Y axis being 0, I'm just going to go ahead and say that we want to have uh, not move horizontal, but move vertical times the jump force. Let's go ahead and go back inside our game and play it again, because what you'll notice is that even though we do have left, right, and if I were to jump, you can see we fly to hell all the way up into the sky. And that's because right now it is constantly jumping us as long as we hold down W or up. And that's not something that we want. Now, one way to get around this is to check if we're sitting on the ground. So if my player has landed on the ground and is standing there, then I want to be able to just register one jump. So let's go back inside our code and discuss the three ways we could essentially do this. The first method is using a ray cast, as we call it, which means that we take our player and we shoot a ray that we can't see going downwards. And if it hits the ground, then we should be able to jump. The second way, which is the easy way, as I called it, is by creating another collider on our game object underneath our player. And if that collider is triggered by hitting the ground, then it means that we should be able to jump again. That's the way I like to do it. And the third way, which is the good way, is that instead of using a ray cast, which is the first method I, I talked about, we use something called the box cast that actually shoots not just a ray, but an entire box going downwards. So what I'll do is I'll go inside Unity. I'll go to our player, make sure we have them selected. I'll add another collider and I'm going to call this one a box collider 2D. Just going to move it above my script here. And inside my box collider 2D, I want to make sure that is trigger is activated because we don't want the player to actually be hitting something with this collision here. We just want it to tell us if the player or if this box collider here has hit something. So if I were to zoom in on my player, you can see that right now we do have a box collider as well. I'm going to change it by editing the collider and just resizing it to roughly around here. I can actually just go ahead and say I want to resize it down here to 0 0.03. And then I just wanted to move it down slightly. So minus 0 0.51 roughly. So now we have a small box collider here at the bottom that can actually check if it's actually hitting the ground. And with this, it makes sense that our player shouldn't be rotating and landing on the side, you know, because then we can't actually be hitting the ground with the bottom part of the player. So inside our rigid body 2D, make sure that under constraints, we have freeze rotation C activated. So we don't rotate our player during gameplay. This is going to lock it. So he's always going to be standing upright. Inside our code, I'm going to go down below fixed update. And we're going to be talking about another method that is built into Unity called on trigger enter 2D. So basically it's just saying that we have a collider 2D data type, and that is going to be the collision, which is going to be whatever we're hitting inside our game. So what I'll then do is I'll go inside my method and say if the collision is the ground, then I want my is jumping to be equal to false. Because if I land on the ground, it means that I'm not jumping at the moment. So I can go inside my method, write an if statement, and I can say if my collision dot game objects dot tag is equal to platform, um, then this is going to, to run the code inside the if statement. And you're probably going to get confused here because we haven't actually assigned any platform to anything yet. For now, let's just go ahead and inside the if statement, say that we want to set is jumping equal to false. Now, right now as it is, this can't be true. 
And why is that? Well, that's because right now we don't actually have any tags inside our game that is called platform. So if I go inside my Unity, and if I were to just grab my player or something, go to the very top, you can see that we have tag and layer at the very top here. So what I can do is I can say, we want to actually tag this player object. And as you can see, we have some default ones that are here to begin with. And I can just assign my player to player if I wanted to. But what we wanna do is we wanna go to the ground and assign this one to platform, which is what we wrote inside our code. But as you can tell, we don't have any platform. So what I can do is I can go down add tag. And as you can see, the list is empty. So I'll say we have a platform save so going inside the ground we can then say they want to tag this as platform and then i want to go inside my code again oh uh, it is throwing us a error message still that is because i'm setting it equal to platform but i want to check if it's equal to platform two equal signs means that we're checking if they are equal whereas one equal sign is that i'm setting it equal just to so you know the difference there so two equal signs so now that we did this uh we are now checking if our player hits the ground, then he should be able to jump. But there's something else we want to do, which is that if we exit the ground, then we want jumping to be set equal to true because now we're jumping. So what I'll also do is I'll add another void on trigger exit 2D. And we're actually gonna copy paste the code from inside the enter and just change it to true inside the if statement. And now after doing this, we need to make sure that our is jumping variable down here actually has an effect on when we press the jump button. So going up inside our fixed update, inside the if statement, what I also need to do is I need to check if is jumping is equal to false, meaning that we're standing on the ground before we can actually allow this uh, jump to happen. So I'll go ahead and say exclamation mark is jumping to ampersand symbols. And just to kind of explain what I just did here, if I were to not have a exclamation mark in front of is jumping, I'm checking if I'm in the air because I'm checking if is jumping is true, which is not what we want. We want to check if it's false. So we do the opposite by writing a exclamation mark. Now the ampersand symbols is basically saying that we have two conditions here. We have is the player jumping or actually is the player not jumping. And by using the ampersands, it means that both of these conditions need to be true in order for the jump to happen. If I were to save this, go inside Unity, you'll notice that if I were to hold down my jump key, you know, it's not flying up into the air and I'm actually still holding it down. And as you can see, it falls down again, register, we hit the ground and then I can jump again. There is one more thing I want to do, which is a couple of adjustments. So what I'll do is I'll go inside my rigid body 2D. I'll set the linear drag to five to get a little bit of air resistance so we don't fly up into the air. And then I'll also go and set the gravity to 10 instead of one. And again, this is something you can mess around with depending on how you want your specific game to feel. I also want to go into collision detection and set it to continuous because if I move my character really fast and he hits another object, then we can actually go through the object if our collision detection isn't running continuously. So we would press play and try this again. You can see that we're jumping not as high, um, but we are jumping and falling down again. Something to note here that you might notice is, well, at least if my screen recorder is capturing it for you, is that it kind of, it kind of feels like, you know, there's a little bit of jittering going on. It's like the object isn't smooth when it's running sideways. If I were to go into interpolate inside our rigid body 2D, and change it to interpolate, then it will move a little bit smoother when we move it from side to side. Like this is looking better for me. I don't know if it's looking better for you, uh, depending on how my screen recorder is capturing it, but this is much smoother movement on my end. So the interpolate setting is something that I do recommend using as well if your object is not moving that smoothly. So now this is basically how we can get our player to run around and jump around and get a little bit of platforming going. So you could create more platforms that could be above the ground that you can jump on to if you want to do that uh, just remember to tag them as platform otherwise the jump button isn't going to work on them i know this video is a little bit longer than other videos on the internet but i think it's important to to explain things thoroughly so you don't just do it but you actually understand why you're doing it um, so hopefully i managed to do that in a in a decent way either way i hope you enjoyed this video and i will see you guys in the next video